it's finished. I'm Kristen Hubert. Um, this is the giant queen size quilt I've been working on for the last little while. Um, I did it all quilt as you go in four sections, completely by machine, no hand sewing. Um, I've been working on it for a while. Um, so I've done a few videos. One when I just starting out with it, um, sort of laying out the blocks. And then the next one, my last video, was seven quilt as you go methods that I tested to see which one was going to work for this. So I found one, um, kind of a hybrid of a couple actually, um, that involved no sashing and I kind of tweaked it so that I didn't have to hand sew the back. So um, I hope you enjoy seeing how it all comes together. There were 80 blocks for a queen size for this pattern. Uh, and I divided it into four columns, so two by ten, basically, um, in order to quilt it. Obviously, I started by basting it. I spray basted it. I got this um, batting on a roll that was 27 inches wide, so it was just a little bit wider than the columns that I decided to make. So uh, it is polyester and really thick. I think it was four ounce wadding or something like that. So the quilt is very heavy and thick, but it meant I didn't have to... Um, you know, cut the wadding into the into the particular sizes that I needed to do the columns. So that certainly cut down a bit on time. As well as the spray based, I also used pins and clips just to keep the backing away from the batting and the stitching so I didn't get it puckered. I rolled up each column to take it to the sewing machine. I sewed using the edge of my walking foot as a guide along each seam line. So it was basically I was sewing to either side of where the blocks joined each other and then also a couple of rows in the middle of the blocks, a couple of seams, sorry, in the middle of the blocks. Um, and you'll see why later basically I wanted to give myself um, a pattern that could be easily repeated in the joining process so it maybe was less obvious where I was joining things. So when I got to the other side, I just followed the edge of my presser foot on the other side. So we, each time this, the edge of the presser foot was going against the seam, basically. The inside of the presser foot was going against the seam. And that gave me kind of an even line down. So it was pretty lightly quilted, the whole thing. A lot less than I usually do. I'm usually pretty dense with it. But <laughs> um, this seemed like the best way to go for this quilt. So that's what I did. After each pass down the quilt, I rolled it up. Um, in, and sort of shifted it around so that I could do it from another direction. So whatever was the easiest way, I would turn it around and do it that way. I had a pillow on my lap to hold the bulk of the rest of the, the column that I was uh, working on at the time. And then when I got to the other end, I would sort of roll it up again and come around and quilt on the other side. Okay, so I've got my four sections quilted. Um, I'm taking the opportunity while the kids are out <laughs> to lay these out on the floor in the living room where they have stuff cleared away all their toys <laughs> and just shoved this on the floor. It doesn't even fit as well as it did when I was testing it out before because I now have the extra batting and backing on the side. But anyway, I had labeled the four sections before I started quilting and I'd labeled the top because I'd, had, I'd laid out my sections just to make sure so I just don't want the, there to be too many places where two of the same fabrics meet for this pattern. There's a few places I couldn't really avoid it. And at first I was worried about like directional patterns because I've got a few in here and I've decided I don't care about that. I just want to avoid having too many of the same fabric touch each other. So, uh, but as I was, if you saw the quilting process I was doing where I was rolling it up and flipping it around, I lost track of what was supposed to be the top and the bottom. So I've now re-decided what sections what, what's the top and what's the bottom. So for the four sections, what I've gone and done is just literally safety pin and number to the top for each of the four sections. Okay, so next I'm going to go and trim off the excess batting and backing and then I'm gonna start with my joining. So I'm gonna start with the middle, so three and four, 
because the way I'm doing the quilting, um, I'm wanting to mimic these lines either side of the seam. So my hope <laughs> is that when I join the sections together, I'll have the one line showing because I'm going to do it by machine. And then I'll just have to add in one line on the other side. So that's, that's the plan. So, which means I need to start with the middle so that that's going to be the biggest section I have to fit, like roll and fit through the machine. I think that'll be okay for that one line. And then I'll add to either side and I should be able to, you know, flip it around and still be able to get that one, uh, be able to like maneuver it enough to, to get that one line down the section to sort of make it mimic. So we'll see how that goes. And I will, um, of course, be filming it and show you. When all the quilting was done, I trimmed off all the excess batting and the backing, so I'm trimming it right up to the edge of the block so there's no overhang anymore. And then um, I flipped it over and pinned back the backing and the batting in order to sew the rows together. So that's what's happening here, just to keep it out of the way. So once that was all pinned back, um, I took it to the sewing machine. So I took two columns here. So this is me lining up right sides to right sides, the two columns, and I'm using my little clips just to um, make sure the seams are nesting in key places. So I'm not pinning the whole thing, but I'm pinning where you're gonna notice if it's a little bit off. Uh, and I'm just sort of um, clipping the first few blocks and then sewing and then stopping and then clipping again. So I think sewing together the two columns, um, because of how slowly I was doing it and how often I was stopping to clip, um, took me about a half an hour. So this is not um, sort of a speedy joining process, um, but it seemed to work and everything lined up about as well as it would if I was sewing it without the backing and stuff um, all attached at the same time. back to the floor once it was joined and ironed open the seam. So I've got my little wool pressing mat under here and I'm just shifting it along as I go. You can't really see it, but that's, I'm not ironing straight on the floor. <laughs> so um, I'm just pressing open the seams um, just to make sure it's not super bulky right there. So once that was all done, um, I put the batting, unpinned the batting and then just trimmed it so that it sat, so the edges were just touching. And then I used some quarter inch steam -a seam down the middle. Now this is optional. Lots of people don't use it. Lots of people also hand sew. Um, I didn't want to do hand sewing and I was just a bit nervous about not attaching it at all. I'm not sure how much the steam -a seam really did. Um, but anyway, that's what I used. Um, once that's done, um, obviously you have to take the, the backing paper off of it and I was just had the, ba the, the backing over it initially there so that I didn't iron on the polyester batting. And then this is me just smoothing down the one side and then folding over the opposite side. So I folded the raw edge under and I'm pinning it down. And yes, I have two different colors of navy blue on the back of the quilt. I didn't have enough of one and I didn't want to do a scrappy back because the front was so uh, very busy already. So this is it all pinned and ready to be joined together. So rather than using a quarter inch seam, I'm, I'm trying to sew quite close to the fold, close to the edge there, almost like you were putting, you were sewing down a machine um, binding or something. Um, because obviously you don't want the very edge of that to be flapping open or to be able to get anything caught under it. So you want to sew it um, as close to the edge as you can to attach it there. So 
once it was all joined, I turned it over and uh, the joining line made that stitch line along the one end where the two blocks, two columns, sorry, are joined. So I just did a quilting line to, uh, similar to the other ones to echo it on the other side of the seam. Um, so that was the way I was trying to make it marry up with the rest of the quilt. So there were a few sections where, obviously because I can't see where I'm sewing, it went a bit awry, but otherwise I think it turned out pretty well. So this is a close-up of the top of the quilt. Um, and I think it's, you know, from the back it's easier to tell where it's joined, but I think from the front um, you might struggle a bit. So I made far too much binding for this quilt. Basically, there was another back for the quilt before this blue, before I decided on the two navy blues. I decided to do um, like black with um, some of the scraps from the front, including that brown, but then it was never quite big enough, and I was just thinking it was looking too busy with the front as well, so I cut it up into two and a half inch strips and used it for the binding instead, but I've got loads left over <laughs> for a future project, which isn't a bad thing. So this is the finished quilt and me unraveling it um, in a play park. And those are my kids climbing either side of me, not random children, um, just to sort of show the scale of it. So it's um, just again, the pattern is a Rojas quilt by Wisecraft Handmade. Um, but I've called mine the beast because it's so big and so heavy. <laughs> um, so I took a few more photos of it in the park. Um, including a few of the back so you can see a few puckers and you can see the two shades of navy blue but uh, overall I'm happy with it tried to take some arty shots on a bridge didn't work out a hundred percent but there it is I hope you liked seeing how that all came together um, there's a few little niggly bits that I would probably change if I was doing it again but overall I'm pretty happy with it it's really warm really heavy which I like a heavy quilt um, I think for my next project, I'm going to try something a little bit uh, easier, maybe even, probably, definitely, definitely something um, that is not someone else's pattern because I just get frustrated with cut 300 of this and then do that. So uh, I've got a few more projects, um, some of them easier, quicker, some gifts for Christmas. Uh, all sorts of stuff that I'm working on. So if you like videos like this and you want to see more, then do please hit the bell, subscribe, like, and comment and tell me what you think. Um, would you try doing it quilted as you go like this? Or did you see places where I could have done something different um, that might have <laughs> sped the process up for me? Do let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, thanks for spending time with me and I hope to see you again.